Oh no, the town's being evaded. Hope this infinity bow holds up. Oh no, this thing, oh gosh, this thing is so horrible. Oh no! Oh, that is just too bad. My infinity bow just broke. I guess I can't use one anymore. Oh gosh, I'll have to switch to a sword, which is a much better weapon than an infinity bow. Whew. Okay, gosh. This place is getting crazy. I'm gonna need to light this area up. Oh man. You know what? Let's do that. Where's the bed? All right, it's time to go ahead and get this place lit up because this is getting extremely dangerous. We can't have our townspeople living like this. Well, I'm extremely, extremely saddened to say that my infinity bow broke. I don't, you know, I'm just not used to using an inferior bow that has the ability to break. So I don't know, it's just, I don't know what happened. Like just the durability ran out and it just broke. So, you know, while I did say I would use an infinity bow for the rest of the season, that infinity bow that I promised to use, you know, it's broken now. So I really don't have any other recourse other than using a mending bow for the rest of the season, right? So I guess that's what we'll do is we'll use a mending bow for the rest of the season. And today, today, we're working on a special project and that is lighting. We need to come up with a good, uh, I guess, way to do lighting here in the town as a whole. And we're also just gonna go over lighting in general with everybody. Lighting in terms of making sure things are spawn proof and lighting in case in the sense of making sure everything looks good when RTX is turned on. So we're gonna be going over both of those things here today. So lighting in Minecraft Bedrock Edition and Minecraft Java Edition are actually a bit different from each other for a couple of different reasons. First of all, on Bedrock Edition, you actually have the ability to hide your lighting in ways that you do not have on Java Edition. Because on Bedrock Edition, if I go and I pop a hole down here and I pop another hole right here, and if I place a torch right there, the light is actually going to be able to get through this slab lighting up the area. On Java Edition, it doesn't quite work like that. Lighting can go through carpets. So if you put a carpet down, um, it will go through that, including the new moss carpets, which I don't have one in like eyesight right now. I think there's some back there, but it will go through carpets. So typically what you'll see players on Java Edition do is either um, find some way to incorporate, do I even have any moss back here? To incorporate, yeah, here we go. The uh, lights underneath these carpets of any color, including now the moss carpets to kind of just get lighting spread around and spawn proof things a little bit. Um, but other than that, there's not really a lot of options. You can like place, you know, a torch like under a bush or something like that. Like I've seen people do that. It's not the best looking thing in the world, but it does work to place one under there and it doesn't look absolutely terrible. And there may actually be some spots where we even do that. Uh, but on Bedrock Edition, we do have that extra option of placing things under slabs. Now, why do you need to light up your builds good? Well, I, I think it's kind of obvious. I just showed it, right? There's mobs that will spawn. And if mobs spawn in an area where you're working, you know, maybe you can kill them. Maybe you'll be okay. Unfortunately, if you have a, a infinity bow, it'll probably break. So you won't be able to defend yourself, but so well, but you may have a creeper spawn in on you while you're over here working on something. And then next thing you know, your whole build is explodificated and that's going to be terrible. So lighting up your builds is going to be really important. Now, some people may not really care how their lighting looks. Yeah, you could just, you know, do a bit of this, right? Do a little bit of torch spam and you're all good. It's lit up. No mobs can spawn down this alleyway at all. But if you're trying to really build up a world, a long term world, something that's decorative, not just like inside of a farm, right, then that might look kind of ugly. It might not look very good. So we need to use the lighting that we have available to us in a way that's going to look good. Also, keep in mind, this is going to change really soon when 1.18 comes out, which is only a couple weeks from now. So as of right now, the mobs can spawn in a light level seven or less. 
a torch, for example, is light level 15. So you have light level 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and it keeps going all the way until it gets to about light level seven, which is, I don't know, maybe about right here, right? And then from this spot onwards during the nighttime, if there's no other lights around, mobs will be able to spawn. Well, in the next update, they're changing it so mobs will only spawn a light level zero in terms of block lighting, any kind of light that you, the player, are able to place pretty much anything except for the sun, right? So then instead of it being about right here that mobs would be able to start spawning, now it's gonna be you know somewhere about right here, 15 blocks away to where the light level is down to zero. So that is gonna be a change that's actually gonna help out with lighting quite a bit. But we wanna work on lighting in not only a way that's going to be um, good for spawn proofing, which we're gonna do, but we're also gonna wanna make things good for aesthetic purposes as well. So first, when it comes to the spawn proofing portion, we really want to make sure things are lit up really well all the way through here. And we want to put our lights in probably pretty densely, honestly. So we got one right here where I just trapped myself in the dirt, which we can go ahead and get ourselves out. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put that there and really any places where we have a block where we're already using or can use a slab, a block that has a slab, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop that out. And then we're going to replace the block underneath that with a torch and we're going to go ahead and we're going to put a slab back not a whole block but a slab so we're going to go ahead and put that back and we're going to find all the different places where we can do that and actually start just replacing to make sure we get our lighting good so i can come down here where i do that one right there right so maybe i'll come right here and do another and we're going to do that pretty densely all the way through to make sure that nothing is able to spawn in this area and if we happen to get somewhere where we have like a decent stretch like right here we don't have the ability to do that underneath we might have to get creative with our lighting and do the either the underneath method or we can use moss carpets and we should be able to go ahead and place a carpet right here like this and actually that'll allow us to we can bring our light one block up we can put our light here put our carpet right here and it fits right it looks good it looks like grass so we don't have to worry about the aesthetic portion of things uh, we'll probably also do the same thing right here and now that it's actually turning nighttime this is when you're actually going to be able to see if it's helping or making a difference or not as it gets dark things should look and feel very lit up through here and i do believe that we have accomplished that and you want to make sure you get everywhere right so you know we want to make sure we have good lighting back through here i do think i have lights like in here but just to make sure things are well lit enough to where mobs aren't going to spawn in here i'm just going to go through i'm going to cover all of the little nooks and crannies to make sure that we haven't missed lighting anywhere and we don't have any mobs spawn in on us now also keep in mind there's more in your lighting arsenal than just torches. I actually have a lighting shulker box here that has most of the different types of lighting available. We got plenty of torches, we have lanterns, candles, and rods, sea lanterns, glowstone, shroom lights. There's a lot at your disposal when it comes to lighting. And you can get creative and light at the same time, right? So for example, we have our wall right here where just into the wall, we built in some stream lights. It's decorative, so it serves that purpose. And it also is going to be providing light and making a certain area beyond this wall not spawnable, which is great. We're covering area, whereas otherwise we would maybe have to torch spam or could maybe even just be a little difficult or annoying to do like the hidden lighting underneath the carpets and things like that going across the wall. Um, also, lighting does make it past stairs too. So you also could have done something like this, popped that out, put a, a torch right there and a light right there. And that would also extend light out both ways beyond the stairs. So it's good to know these things or even trap doors, right? You could knock this out right here and then put a torch right there, put that down. Nobody knows it's there. The torch is hidden, but it is actually providing light out in this direction and spawn proofing the area. Keep in mind though, that if you put lights up high, like I have here, while they may look kind of cool and you'll see in RTX later that they look kind of cool, keep in mind that you're losing light level as you go down. So whereas normally that light would maybe spawn proof out about this far, if it were on the same level or surface, now it's, it's probably only spawn proofing just the immediate little area around it. So it's always something good to know. Again, we're gonna go over lighting in 1.18 in the bedrock guide season two a little bit in more detail because lighting is going to be changing in terms of spawn proofing but for now it's kind of good to know 
the basics of how lighting is working and why it's important. Now, speaking of RTX mode, it's important to know that lighting in RTX is extremely different, but the mechanics work the same. So if I were to do like I did before, pop a hole in here, pop a torch right there and cover that hole over, you know, we're providing light. This area right here is spawn proofed, but RTX works a little bit differently. I'm going to turn it on really quick here. You see with RTX on right now, we don't see this light at all. It's there. See RTX off. We're lit up. So it's spawn proof. When I turn RTX on, we're not spawn proofed anymore. It's still providing the light. Mobs still can't spawn in the same general area, but we can't see the light because RTX uses a form of, I guess, showing the light that's different. If the light is physically blocked, it's not going to show it. RTX uses a system called physical based rendering. It's only going to render light if it would be physically visible in real life. So that's not visible. If I pop this out, you see it is visible. It's only shining upwards though. It's not really shining around because the lighting would kind of be blocked by all of this area around it. So it's not going to illuminate light all through here. On the flip side, if I put up a torch, the light's going to throw a pretty decent distance. It's actually going to throw light further than what would be spawn proof. So you have a pretty bright light right here in terms of what's actually being thrown off by that torch. But this would still be a spawnable block because the light level right here is below light level seven. So you sort of have two things that you need to consider when you're lighting if you're also doing it aesthetically. And you can see this across a lot of my builds. In the interior, it can get a little difficult sometimes, right? I have spawn proofed underneath here using the slab method that you guys saw before. And then I made sure that I incorporated lights in multiple areas. That way the room is well lit. Um, different types of lights throw off more or less light than each other. And I'm not going to go too heavily into the weeds with the RTX lighting details and things like that. But let me grab a couple of examples just to kind of show you what I mean. Now, as we sit here with all of these lights set out, you kind of see like none of them really seem to throw off a ton of light. That's because they don't really have anything to bounce off of. You're really going to see a lot more of this in terms of like the caves or inside of a town where the light has like objects actually bounce off of walls, trees, etc. Um, and you'll see the big difference in how the lighting looks here versus if I turn RTX off how far the lighting extends out here. When you have RTX off, you get to see actually how far the light is physically going in terms of the game mechanics. Whereas with RTX on, you're gonna see how far it goes in terms of like actual visible lighting. So just know that it does work differently in terms of sight, but it does not work differently at all in terms of the game mechanics. Now, how do we start incorporating this into our town? And this is very, very evident when we come out here to the town that we just lit up because you can see with RTX off, it is pitch black through here, except for some interior lighting that I've thrown into some of the houses to spawn proof them that I didn't hide. Whereas if I turn RTX mode off, as you can see, very well lit. Don't have to worry about mob spawns through here at all. So now what we need to do is we're going to go to sleep so we don't get blown up. <laughs> we're going to work on actually adding in lighting in a way that looks good. So really at first, we're just going to keep things kind of simple. We're, our town is themed around nat very natural lighting, medieval lighting. So lanterns are extremely prevalent out here. And that's what we're going to be sticking with. We won't be going with any of the block types like shroom lights or anything like that. Yeah, they were incorporated in the walls. But in terms of the actual town, I'm not incorporating any of that type of lighting in at this time. Uh, but what we will do is work with the areas that we have. So... What I need to figure out is where the heck am I going to attach a light to this? Sometimes it's not always easy to do. Um, so maybe what we can do, we need to find somewhere to either attach a chain or put a trap door or something. Like sometimes you can even sit lanterns. Like I could put one right here that'll light up this portion of the house, which will look good. They don't really seem to like make sense or, or have a place on top of bushes. It wouldn't make sense in real life. So I'm not going to do it there. Maybe what we do is we knock off this vine right here. Oh, we're using dark oak here, but then we also have spruce. So let's go with the spruce right here and we'll just we'll just drop a lantern. Oh, I'm going to have to get rid of that carpet on top there. Drop a lantern right here. And while it looks slightly out of place, it works. It fits. It's OK. I could maybe even you know what? Let's do this. It's OK. We can change things around. You got to toy with things to make sure that they look good. 
And yeah, I think that turned out good. We have a little bit of symmetry now. The front of the house is well lit. We'll take a look at it when it turns nighttime, but I like that. I think it looks good. We forgot to do the floor in here and some zombies have knocked down my doors. So we'll be fixing that at some point as well. Uh, but what we want to do is continue on with our lighting and really kind of take those same concepts like we did here and extend that around putting some on the ground where it makes sense especially on top of barrels is a really good spot to fit lighting um and then otherwise you're hanging it off of there or if you can get it anywhere kind of high you can even use chains something like this area right here we could maybe use a chain and hang a, a lantern here and remember things don't always need to look or feel symmetrical it's good to have things mixed up a little bit so this one can hang a little bit lower i think that looks good and we're going to continue this pattern or this style all the way through and we have a lot of lighting here i want to take a look and kind of see what things look like when it's nighttime to see if i went too dense with the lighting because that is possible too you want we already know it's like it's it's spawn proofed so we don't have to worry about lighting from a sense of like actually keeping mobs from spawning we're just worried about the aesthetics and I, I feel like maybe i went a little heavy on the lanterns like this one right here feels a little like a little much i'm just gonna go ahead and take that one out now and we're just gonna try to make sure that it looks well lit but it doesn't look over lit see we got two right here i don't like this one on the ground so maybe we'll get rid of that one right there this seems oh Oh, hello. It's not all the way spawn proof yet, apparently. I don't know where he came from, probably from out here somewhere. Yeah, it seems like very, very, very bright. Like I don't need, I don't think I need this right here. We'll get rid of that. I think the two, I think we have one up there. That's fine. Having two here, I don't think is necessary. I, I do like the look of it, but I don't think it's really needed. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punch a hole in the wall, too. Make sure you don't do that part, because that's a proud move for sure. Maybe we get rid of this top one right here. I think I chained down a moment. But yeah, that looks good. Ooh, see, this is really dark right here. I don't like that, because again, remember, even though we have a light right there, it can't like reach down past this. So I'm not quite sure what exactly to do you know what i think i do know what to do watch we'll go ahead we'll put a moss block right here we'll sit a lantern on top of that and now it lights up our area a little bit it looks a little bit better so yeah just kind of going through and we want to make sure that everything feels well lit not only from the front but from the back as well and really it seems like your lighting you probably really want to mostly keep it down low which is seem to work good for us now we have plenty of lighting on the back side here which i think makes the like the buildings and the area feel a lot more complete we can maybe use some type of light in here turn rtx mode off really quick just to try to accomplish that in some way possibly just knock one of these out and then hang a light there yeah that's a lot better just get some kind of light in the back here and this like exact same process you're just pretty much going to repeat and do this anywhere that you need to in a town now i would recommend you go back to watch other episodes of mine such as the uh, micro farm episode where I build this and we, we light things up here too because in numerous of my episodes whenever I build something I always try to go through after the fact and make it well lit as well I want it to be I want it to look good with RTX on that's not the focus of the episodes per se but at the end of the episode I always like to throw in some good RTX lighting like you can kind of see here where we got this shop lit up well on the outside and we even make sure that we do our lighting well on the inside too to make everything functional to light it up good enough to where you can walk around inside of the building and see without having your view obstructed in any way by the darkness same thing for the storage room here. You can see where we have the lighting uh, very well spread out to where the whole storage room is lit. That way it would be usable at nighttime. Uh, we build in things into the hallway here, lanterns. That way the entire like staircase here is well lit. And then the hanging lights down here in the basement. It's just, it's a thought that you have to have everywhere. You go through the process again go through and spawn proof everything first so your lighting is good to the point where you won't have mobs come in and then 
hide all of that lighting and come in and then add in your additional lighting, like the map lighting we have right here to make sure our table is nice and lit, just to add in that extra aesthetic. Because if you do this with RTX on, or if you don't even have to do it with RTX, a lot of you guys I know don't have RTX, so that's fine. You can still do these things to make your room look good and like it's actually being lit without RTX on because it adds in a very like extra good aesthetic layer to your builds that make them feel a lot more realistic. It just happens to also be very functional when you use RTX, whereas it's not as functionally needed when RTX is turned off because we're already getting all of our lighting from hiding it underneath half slabs in the floor or underneath carpets or whatever. So a couple final notes before we end up things today. 1.18 is almost here. It's going to be out probably on the 30th of this month. So that's like two weeks from now or maybe as late as the 7th. Typically, Mojang always releases the brand new updates on a Tuesday. They started the pre-releases last week and usually it's about 20, I think it's 19 days, 19 days after the first pre-release comes out, the, the update hits. That's, how, that's the way it's been in the past. That could change. It's not guaranteed. But if it is the case, we only have two weeks left. And if I fly up here and take a look for you guys really quick, we, we have a lot of town yet to cover because I need houses to go here, 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 here. And then I still have a couple buildings that I don't know that I'm going to have time to get up houses here. So what I'm going to be doing over the next couple of weeks is really just spending a lot of time building houses, filling in the town, doing lighting, because I want to make sure everybody has a world download that's just it's it feels full. It feels close to done. So most Bedrock Guide content from now until the update, not all, but most will be happening on stream, maybe even daily. So make sure you have your notifications turned on and you come hang out on stream with me. So that way we can get these houses knocked out and get most of this town ready to go before 1.18 comes out. We'll be talking about a lot of special things over the next couple weeks while we wait for 1.18 to hit, including what's going to be happening in Bedrock Guide Season 2. So if you have questions, you want to hear some cool information, you want to talk about updates, you want to see all these different things occur, you're going to want to catch the streams because they're going to have a lot of great information. I'm not sure when this episode is going to come out. It might actually come out Tuesday tomorrow for me, which means that this episode will be coming out before my live stream with one of the Minecraft developers corner hard that is happening on Wednesday, the 17th at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're watching this before November 17th, 4 p.m. Eastern, make sure you catch that stream. So I'm going to be doing some speed running with Corner Hard, one of the Minecraft developers. We'll be doing a little bit of a Q&A as well, asking lots of questions that have come from viewers in my Discord, community members in my Discord and on Twitter. So in any event, I thank everybody for being here and hanging out in this episode. Hopefully you got a lot out of lighting. If you have any lighting tips of your own, please share them down in the comments down below. Also, click that subscribe button, click the thumbs up button on the video, and make sure you catch out the rest of this season of the guide on stream and the start of season two. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate it, and you have a good one. Bye.